everyone. My name is Nakongo Sigolo. I am the community outreach coordinator for St. Louis Park. Uh, and I would like to welcome you to the Metro Green Line extension uh, virtual town hall for the city of St. Louis Park. Uh, we've got tons of material to cover tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload a PowerPoint presentation so we can get going. And Right. So uh, again, this is the virtual town hall for the city of St. Louis Park. Uh, would like to thank you for joining us tonight. We know it's a beautiful day. You could have been doing other things, but you decided to be here with us tonight. We a really, participant has really joined the meeting. That. Um, so my name again is Nakango Sigolo. Uh, tonight. We're going to be talking about the Green Line extension and especially how it relates to St. Louis Park. Uh, we will be going over a brief uh, project overview. Uh, probably many of you uh, have seen uh, what we're going to be uh, presenting here as a project overview. Uh, we thought it would just be uh, important to show that for folks who might not have seen it. Then we'll go over a project update. Uh, there has been a lot of news about the project, so it will, will be a, an opportunity for us to, to go through those details. Uh, we will go over 2021 construction recap. Then we will go into what to expect in 2022. So that will cover the construction highlights for 2022. Uh, we'll talk briefly about systems and then we'll cover communications and outreach. So a few housekeeping uh, items, uh, please mute your microphone uh, to avoid unnecessary distraction for other participants. Uh, if you have a question, if you must speak, unmute your microphone and then mute it once you're done speaking. Um, we'll we can take questions at the end of each uh, topic here, uh, or you know you could wait uh, till the end of the presentation. Then we'll take uh, all of the other questions. So uh, if you must uh, speak, please feel free to uh, either raise your hand or unmute your microphone and ask a question. So for a project overview, uh, the Metro Green Line extension, what is the Metro Green Line extension? Uh, it is uh, essentially the extension of the existing Green Line that runs between downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. Uh, that is getting extended all the way to Eden Prairie. So it will be an extension of about 14 and a half mile uh, of new LRT with 16 new stations. We'll provide one ride from Eden Prairie all the way to downtown St. Paul uh, with uh, connections to the U of M uh, through downtown Minneapolis to the U.S. Bank Stadium to the Lions Stadium in St. Paul and again all the way to uh, downtown St. Paul. Uh, that will also provide uh, connections to existing rail uh, such as the Blue Line where folks would be able to transfer in the downtown. Uh, so starting at the target field all the way to the U.S. Bank Stadium, folks will be able to transfer from the green line to the blue line and proceed all the way to the airport. Um, so the commute will be about uh, 35 minutes from downtown Minneapolis all the way to Eden Prairie. Uh, and what's the scope of the project? We're building 16 new stations, as I mentioned a little earlier. We're building 44 structures, uh, 29 bridges, no bridges, I should say, pedestrian roadway, freight, seven existing bridges that are, get, are getting retrofitted for LRT, uh, six or because of the LRT and six pedestrian tunnels, uh, two cut and cover tunnels, one, uh, a trunk highway 62, what, 5,582 feet, and then 
and the Kenilworth. Uh, this is rather the longest tunnel on the project. And if you've heard uh, in the news, uh, we're experiencing, we're experiencing some issues in the Minneapolis portion, and it's related to this tunnel. Uh, 15 are great crossings that we're sharing, uh, five of them with uh, freight, and then uh, about 127 retaining walls, 182,000 linear feet of track, uh, and about eight mile of shared, uh, shared corridor with the freight. All right, so we'll get into the project updates if there are no questions about uh, the the overview here. So for the project update, um, you've heard and you've seen this in the news that the project is experiencing, is, has experienced uh, some challenges uh, in the Minneapolis portion of the alignment. Uh, you know, and that was um, uh, realized just a little while as soon as construction started. Uh, we. Um, we found a few things and we'll talk about those in details here as we uh, as we move along. Uh, so you've probably heard in the news and uh, um, about the delays. Um, you know, there's, a, there's tons of information out there, uh, some correctly representing the facts and, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, some other uh, misinformation about the project. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, this venue would be uh, appropriate to uh, kind of talk about some of those and uh, help uh, provide accurate information on the real on the real accounts and the challenges that the project is facing. So, so what's the delay? Why? And uh, how do we go forward? And and why? Uh, so, if you recall, if you've been following the project at the beginning of. Uh, 2021, the Metropolitan Council announced that the project would be delayed and that the 2023 projected opening time would not be met. And that the uh, project team was working to uh, figure out uh, some new strategies of tackling a few project elements. So there there are two main items in Minneapolis, and then there's an item in Eden Prairie that the contractor has also cited as uh, one item that um, is causing delays because they'd have to uh, reorganize and shuffle their staffing needs and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll begin with the uh, corridor protection wall. So the, this is one item uh, that we knew about um, and it, you know, it's a basically it's a barrier between the freight and the LRT, and this uh, corridor protection wall uh, had to be added to the project uh, because it came about the time after the project had gone out for bids, and the contract had already been assigned. Uh, the contract had already been awarded to. Uh, London across and joint venture. So this was an addition to the to the contract. Uh, it's uh, over a mile of uh, retaining retaining wall or barrier. Sorry, not retaining wall, but barrier wall, I should say, and uh, not your regular uh, you know sheetrock wall that you build in your home. This is a, a massive wall. You know, it's about uh, three feet wide and about ten feet, you know, from the foundation up, and it, you know, uh, it, additional cost to the project, and also uh, time, um, you know, because it has to be fitted in the schedule, and mind you, the schedule that had already been uh, devised by by the the contractor. So that's one item. So the second item um, is the second pile. Uh, wall. So um, in Minneapolis, as crews started construction of the Kenworth Tunnel, that's the longest tunnel uh, on the project, at the initial uh, start of the project, they realized that there were issues with the soil. Uh, so in the abundance of caution, a participant uh, folks, has joined the meeting. Folks, uh, our crews, you know, stopped 
construction and the project started looking at new ways to build um, around you know adjacent properties because they'd realized that there was a settlement issue um, and so this also this is another change that you know needed to be added to the project to the contract and you know it's rather more complex as you know we looked at other alternatives you know our design team came up with a second pile wall so basically it is it is a wall i would say a retaining wall but it's a pile wall that uh, is going to be built or is being built beyond the uh, support of excavation. So as you know, this is a cut and cover tunnel. So we're putting sheets to support the excavation so that you know we could dig and start building in the middle. So this wall would have to be built after the sheet after the sheeting, the metal sheeting to kind of protect the integrity of uh, adjacent property, the Calhoun Isle condominium, as you've probably heard in the news. Uh, about, you know, tons of news about uh, situation around that property. So um, since we are there, you know, you've probably heard that, you know, we found a few things, uh, you know, the owners of that, uh, of the association reported that, you know, they noticed some cracking uh, that was reported to the project and immediately, you know, our, our project hired a, a an investigator to go out there and start looking at what what is happening um it was determined right away that it was still safe for people to live in that building as investigations uh continue uh the investigations have not concluded yet so they're still underway uh and you know as as additional information comes out about that uh, cracking in that prop, you know, in that property would, you know, would would uh, would make that uh, available. And uh, certainly, if you have any questions, you'd free you you'd feel free to reach out to us. So those are the two elements. So uh, and then, as I mentioned, the contractor is also citing the Eden Prairie Town Center station, which had originally been removed from the project. In 2015, we went through a, a process to reduce the scope of the project because the project was over, over budget at that time. And so, you know, Eden Prairie was one of the stations that you know, were removed. And then Mitchell Station is the other station uh, that was removed from the project. But uh, later, the Eden Prairie Town Center Station was added um, by the city of Eden Prairie after receiving uh, a grant. So that was another change that, you know, the project uh, uh, faced or in the contract of citing as a delay. So I know that's, uh, that's tons of information right there. Um, but um, now I would just mention that at the beginning of this year, so beginning of 2021, the news was made that we we're gonna uh, experience some delays in 2023 it was not going to be the opening day. Uh, 2022, this, uh, early this, uh, this year, the Metropolitan Council authorized our project staff to uh, start working on an agreement on you know, how to add these change orders, to add, um, all of you know the issues related to the construction in, in the Minneapolis, and you know to come up, uh, uh, start coming up with an agreement. So that was authorized early this year, uh, so that our you know our folks could go ahead and negotiate that. Um, so additional information on that will be provided, but you know there are some uh, some some guiding uh, principles uh, so that you know. We understand that with the the changes and the additions here, you know that the project would be pushed uh, several several years. So we understand that construction, the civil construction, would be pushed for 34 months. 
Uh, we also understand that um, it is anticipated that the new opening date would be 2027. At least we'd work on the new opening date, you know, for 2027. So those are the, the two major pieces that uh, came out of, uh, of the, the permission from the Med Council given to our project team to continue with. So at least the path forward for the project to go ahead uh, but again, you know, there are still additional details that need to be uh, figured out. But, you know, there's a number already, you know, guiding numbers there about, you know, that would add about 450 to $550 million to the project. So uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go, as we go forward here. So where, where are we at right now? So, you know, the cons civil construction costs, you know, we would add the new agreement, new construction agreement uh, that our project, our project team is negotiating with contractor. And then, you know, uh, add the change orders, you know, that would amount to an additional 34 months. Uh, so we're anticipating that civil construction will go into uh, 2025 uh, when it was anticipated that that would have concluded by, by, by 2022 by the end of the construction season in 2022. So what will come out of that will be a, a revised construction schedule and cost. And so when I say cost, it means that, you know, it, the final cost has not been determined yet, but we do have some, you know, some guiding rules on, on that, as I mentioned, and uh, additional information on that will be provided. So. There are tons of things to be taken into account, you know, as as we figure out what you know the final cost is going to be and uh, what the project schedule is going to be at the end. Uh, you know, the revised civil construction alone, you know, that one we will be able to you know to get through that, and then the additional um, additional negotiations would have to be carried with our systems contractors. You know. The systems contract as well, you know, has been awarded. It was awarded in 2019, actually, uh, and you know, all that done, you know, with the anticipation that uh, they would begin work early, and 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 you know, provide a final product by 2023. So that is not going to be the case anymore. So we still need now to revisit with the systems contractor, and then. Uh, other additional supporting contracts that we have will also need to be uh, looked at and and then you know negotiated so that we could come up with the revised project cost by opening day. All right. So as I said, we know that uh, it would add about 34 months, uh, you know, to the project. Uh, the revised systems schedule and cost is yet to be determined. Um, and then uh, additional supporting contracts and testing will also still need to be determined. So um, stay tuned for additional information. A participant has left the meeting. We are estimating that, uh, you know, the project cost would be about 2.6 2.65 billion to 2.75 billion dollars, you know, the finish. That is the ballpark. Um, and again, you know, additional information, you know, still needs to come out and finalized, but, you know, we anticipate opening day of 2027. So, we have heard and uh, we've had, you know, we've heard some questions from community members, you know, wondering, you know, where this money is coming from and if it's even worth it to continue with the project. Um, and if we're seeking funding from, uh, from some of our partners. Uh, and, and quite frankly, uh, you know, 20, 2015, we, we had this uh, cost cutting uh, exercise that removed tons of elements from the project. Um, you know, you may have heard that folks are asking, you know, could there be room to cut other elements on the project? The project has already gone, undergone, 
tons of uh, refinements at this point. There's really not much left to be removed from the project. Um, we're about 60% complete with, 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 with civil construction. So, um, you know, meaningful reductions are really not available. Um, so we're not seeking funding from uh, city partners. Uh, you know, where is the funding coming from? We're still working with our partners to identify available sources. Uh, this is uh, still in the works. And, you know, as you know, these projects um, move along with construction, you know, as you know, things get uh, uh, solidified and resolved. So this is, this is one of them. So stopping the project, you know, we've we've been hearing that, you know, stopping the project that has been built to 65 to 60% roughly, you know, it, it it is just going to be a lot more costly than uh, than, than building it. And, you know, I'm not making any any sales here, you know, I'm not door knocking and selling you this, you know, but you know, I thought we'd uh, just look maybe at uh, you know how the cost compared to you know peer projects uh, you know across the nation you know so uh, look at uh, Seattle, Portland, Houston, and you know very confident our costs currently at below or you know similar um, costs as um, projects along you know uh, around the nation. So the previous Green Line extension uh, is about 11.5 mile, um, $152 million per mile. And you know, if you're if you're a geek and you want to add, you know, factor inflation into that, you know, that project, you know, was completed 2014, you know, 2013. So um, but you know, our revised Green Line extension. Um, cost is going to be about 180 to 190 million per mile. Uh, and then peer projects, you know, along the nations are ranging between uh, 200 million to 500 million per mile. Um, and this, you know, I'm not making this up. Um, you know, if you're interested, you could go to Inno Center of Transportation and uh, look that up. Um, so we're building a 14 and a half mile long uh, corridor here of light rail with 16 new stations. We're at 180, between 180 and 190 million dollars. Look at Pittsburgh, you know, a short corridor, 560 million per mile. Uh, if you look at Seattle, the east line, you know, almost comparable to our project in length, uh, you know, only 10 stations but already at $259 million. So, you know, that information is out there. You know, you can uh, check it out if you, uh, if you want uh, to, uh, to read uh, a little bit into it. So I, I had a presentation um, about two weeks ago and uh, in Hopkins and, uh, and there was a question that, that, that you know, that, would, uh, that was asked and the, the question was, um, so how long before this project is paid out, meaning um, how long before the collection in revenue pays for this project? <laughs> so I scratched my head a little bit and I started looking really uh, deeply into that. I've, you know, I've never really thought about that, it, you know, but it would be, uh, it would be something <laughs> difficult to um, to calculate knowing that, you know, this is a, you know, public transportation uh, that is uh, subsidized, of course, you know, as all public transportation and roadways and, you know, all those are subsidized and we know that. Uh, but, you know, as we start looking at the payout, you know, for, you know, for these projects, we start thinking of, you know, what is happening? What is, what, what are the results of, you know, such, such projects? And you know, you know the fact speaks for themselves. Um, there's about more than two billion in permitted and planned community development already along the alignment. Minnetonka, the open station being built, uh, elevate at, at Eden Prairie, 
that has already been built and you know folks already living in there Moline in downtown Hopkins the Beltline development yeah, this one is beginning construction this this June um, you know start looking along the alignment um, of course not on the slide here but L, um, uh, the place development at Wooddale you know they've already started renting out so if you talk to the cities they will tell you that you know you know folks are getting interested in you know development along the alignment so that's a that's a benefit that's a benefit of this those of this projects so yes so this is a payout one of the payouts disadvantaged business enterprise uh, these are minority you know people of color working on the project you know men uh, women sorry uh, working on the project minority women working on the project so we've got the civil contract itself has got a 16 percent goal um but in up to date we are you know we've already exceeded that the, the civil contract has already exceeded that it's uh, 21 percent uh and 130 39 million dollars already built to date you know from disadvantaged business enterprise a systems uh systems contractor <clears throat> excuse me a systems contract is already at 12 12 percent 11.5 million you know and and then, and then dba percentage is at you know 16 16.2 um system is already warming up you know they've not even started the race yet so uh, you know there's a good uh, there's a good numbers that we're seeing here the franklin omf and again this this omf was uh, uh retrofitted so that it could uh, accommodate the, the green line extension trains you know the the be is built about seven seven point six million dollars so that's uh, about 18.9 uh, percentage achieved so we're looking good in, in this sense. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to have that news here. This is one of the other parts of that of the project. <clears throat> so where who uh, who's who's getting paid? Where are the payments going? Uh, <clears throat> so about fifty-three point one million dollars are being spread throughout the state here. So about 65 of the 87 counties, you know, are seeing a check mailed out to folks who live in those areas. Um, you know, folks even near our Canadian border, uh, uh, the Canadian border over there, you know, they're seeing this paycheck. So, you know, this is another benefit of the project. You know, and we thought it would be also, you know, a good thing to talk about. So, you know, what are the benefits? You know, we're putting people to work, you know, about more than 1.8 million hours, you know, 53.1 million in checks mailed out to Minnesota residents. Um, and then employing folks from 75 of our counties. Uh, you know, 134 million dollars as mentioned earlier, you know, built to the DBE. And, you know, the project, by the time it's completed, would have supported about 7,500 7, construction jobs and, and $300 million in payroll. So that's, uh, that's another fact that we wanted, you know, folks to, to know about. Um, okay, I, I will continue if I hear no questions. So briefly, you know, I'd like to go over, you know, what has been accomplished, what we saw in 2021. Um, <clears throat> so this slide here shows what a typical uh, project construction process is. So we begin with utilities, you know, this is a hundred year infrastructure that needs to be built to last so no need for conflicts so then utilities are looked at and then 
removed or relocated. And the site is prepped, you know, there's clearing of buildings, the uh, construction zone is established, you know, the detours are put in place, and then construction, the, you know, the, the civil construction begins. So we'll build structures, track stations, track beds, and, you know, buildings, roadway, trails. So that, we've already done 60% of that, you know, the Previous steps have already been completed. Utilities are out, completely out of the way. Uh, the site prep, you know, done. Construction, 60%. Civil construction, 60% done. Um, and then proceed to the systems, to the systems contract. You know, the you know this adds the overhead catenary that will power the trains. You know, install safety and security features, cameras, uh, intercoms. Uh, ticket vending machines. So that's the next, you know, step that would uh, lead to uh, putting, um, you know, the alignment in service mode, start collecting fares on the alignment. So and then testing. Testing is uh, another extensive uh, process, you know, where, you know, folks ensure that safety is, you know, is met and, and you know, the communication systems are doing what they're supposed to do. And then, you know, the operators are trained and, you know, um, then they rest, you know, they start prior to starting a revenue service. Um, and again, throughout all of these processes, outreach is one piece because, you know, outreach continues to be um, supporting, continues to support, you know, our construction team throughout the entire process, even before this in, pro in project development, uh, outreach is a key component of, uh, of the project. So with the construction highlight, you know, 2021 highlights, as I mentioned, 60% of civil construction is done, 25 of the 29 bridges, uh, eight tunnels underway out of the eight, uh, 114 retaining walls of the 131 retaining walls. Um, so we had nine, 946 private utilities, you know, 95% have been uh, completed. Uh, and then um, nearly about, you know, 1,300 uh, public utilities that have also been completed. All the buildings have been demolished. And, and again, the uh, systems contractor has also mobilized on their design and procurement. Franklin Operations and Maintenance Facility has undergone modifications and is, you know, it's near, nearly complete. Uh, we've ordered the light rail vehicles, so the 26 of the 27 vehicles have already been delivered. So, uh, you know, LRT stations underway, 11 stations underway of the 16 stations. Um, Louisiana is one of the stations that has not, you know, yet uh, uh, been started on. Um, so when, 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 when this is completed, you know, uh, we provided a stress-free commute all the way, you know, to downtown St. Paul, you know, from Eden Prairie all the way to downtown St. Paul. Um, you know, we, we know what traffic, you know, is, especially out in the West. So uh, this will be uh, serving our communities out there to ensure that, you know, they're, uh, they're getting to where they need to go. Uh, so, Again, you know, improved connections to regional destinations, Minneapolis Grand Rounds, Methodist Hospital, you know, just south of uh, Oxford there, um, you know, downtown Hopkins, United Health Groups, and, uh, and so forth. So, to the right, you know, some of the stations, but we'll go into details as we, uh, as we proceed. So, uh, just want to show some photographs. It's always good, you know, to have the visual. Um, so this is the Minnehaha Creek LRT bridge. It is under construction. The beams have already been set up. Uh, full on work uh, is going to continue to get that buttoned up uh, to the right of that. You, you will see the freight so that's the freight bridge. Uh, 
can see it clearly. And then what's to the right of the freight bridge is the pedestrian bridge. But the photo on the right bottom of the screen here uh, shows, you know, the freight, and then it shows uh, it shows the, uh, the pedestrian bridge over the creek. So what else uh, in 2021, um, to the Louisiana Avenue LRT bridge and walls uh, to the far right there, that's the construction of the Louisiana uh, LRT bridge. So the bridge don't, you know, the LRT bridge don't go over Louisiana. And then to the, to the right, uh, you'll start to see the, the retaining wall. And I've got a graphic that you know has got all the retaining wall listed here and we can uh, we can look at that as we as we go along with this uh with this uh, presentation here so this is how it's looking out there um additional work to to follow and again another photo of the louisiana avenue lrt bridge uh so this was right at the uh, intersection there so you can see the pier in the middle piers in the middle there and you can see the abutment to the right the photo to the uh, right bottom of the screen here, you'll see you'll see the other abutment to the to the west, and uh, there's a little bit of work that still needs to go there. Uh, there's a wall that needs to be built there, and uh, that will be under underway uh, shortly here. So Louisiana Avenue. Uh, station pedestrian tunnel so this is the this is a connection um, you know that goes underneath the freight uh, uh, freight alignment there so uh, to provide uh, folks with a connection to to the station uh, so folks who would would be uh, using the would be using the trail on the other side would be able to connect to the station using this pedestrian tunnel. A southerly connector. Uh, this is uh, another piece of structure that uh, is underway. Um, so this would essentially be the connection between the Bass Lake Spur and the MNNS Spur. So it's calling it a southerly connector. Basically, it's a freight connection that, as you know, the MNNS runs east and west. The I'm sorry, the Bass Lake Spur runs east and west. The MNNS Spur runs north and south. So this will provide a connection further to the southeast so that those two could intersect. And, you know, this is important, this location, because this construction has disrupted the Y that used to serve uh, the businesses along uh, Oxford there. So uh, this will replace that and uh, will provide a connection further to the south. So additional photos of the southerly connector, the Louisiana station. Um, you know, massive, massive structures, but you know it's looking good. This is uh, another uh, angle of the photographs. You know, for the southerly connect connector, um, and I just want to mention here if you're if you're seeing. Um, if you're connected by a video, you'll see that wall I'm pointing out here that this is a, this is a retaining wall E218 that is continuing all the way south, you know, to the uh, almost towards uh, Edgewood. So you will see, I'm sorry, towards Cambridge, this is Edgewood. Uh, so there are townhomes at that location and then there's a building, there's a business in this building over here, you know, we're working with them, you know, as we coordinate, you know, uh, construction so that they know what to expect. Um, you know, because this, this, uh, these structures require pile driving and, uh, it could be annoying. Uh, so 
Knowing it's coming, knowing what to expect is always a plus. It was good to have. So Woodell, uh, this is what Woodell looks like. Uh, this will, uh, will be progressed as we continue along with construction. Um, that's an iframe building in the background there. Uh, and then you can see the, you know, the uh, canopies and uh, you know, the structural steels already up. So that's uh, what Woodell looks like at the, at the moment. Trunk Highway 100, um, light rail bridge. So if you recall, I believe uh, we, you know, when we had this meeting uh, last year, we we showed um, we showed a video of uh, of the freight bridge being moved, really like really shifted uh, or rolled to the north so that it could give way to the LRT bridge. So this is the LRT bridge, brand new and in place and additional follow-on work you know, to be continued to get this ready for the LRT trains. Beltline Boulevard station, I can see the station is uh, starting to look uh, real there in the structural steel canopies and I see the uh, pedestrian bridge in the back there. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to advance this work as, uh, as construction uh, kicks off this this season. So that's for the 2021 construction overview. Um, now we go into 22. What to expect in 2022? So really, essentially, uh, this is a construction activity map. You know, showing various activities at various locations. So we will be uh, doing some. Work at the Minnehaha Creek, as you can see the diamond shape uh, uh, there in yellow. So, you know, that shows uh, the building activities and, you know, we're showing uh, some lane uh, closures, traffic impacts at, uh, at Louisiana as we proceed, we see additional uh, construction activities, uh, building activities just uh, east of Louisiana there. Uh, you know, we've got tons of retaining walls. We've got, uh, still have the, uh, pedestrian work, uh, pedestrian tunnel that, you know, needs to be finished up uh, in that area, uh, you know, building tons of retaining walls, again, you know, tons of structures, piling activities, heavy piling activities actually expected this year. Um, we got some trail impacts, you know, the trails are still impacted, uh, so the, the trail is still closed. Um, I see some additional building activities at uh, at, at Wooddale. Uh, then we see uh, bridge activities at the Highway 100, and as we get to Beltline, we see additional uh, building activities, and we'll go through the details of that as we uh, as we proceed with this uh, presentation. So really, the uh, uh, Louisiana piling activities, you know. And, and we're saying St. Louis Park, you know, piling activities, uh, but you know, with a focus really at the at the Louisiana area here. So you'll see here in uh, you know, the bubbles in in black and white lettering. So those are uh, walls that have substantially been completed, um, and you can you know tons of them, and and these involved you know pile driving. It's heavy, heavy have heavy, heavy piling. Um, if you live in this area or work in this area, you can attest to that. And we know it's annoying and we know it's impactful. So we wanted to put this in front of you so that uh, you know what's coming. So in purplish here, that shows work uh, in progress. So uh, you know, I mentioned that there'll be a retaining wall uh, at Louisiana and Oxford for the LRT bridge there, but the LRT bridge, so that's, uh, uh, that's a retaining wall that is going to to be to be built. And it's actually starting uh, this this week. I believe it's starting this week, uh, and that you know will go to about mid uh, mid April. Uh, we have a little bit of work here at the storm sewer. Uh, that, so that will be another activity that you know will be loud. It involves a little bit of uh, I'm sure there, so there'll be some piling. Uh, retaining wall E two. 17, 
you know, as I showed those photos previously, there was a gap between those two massive structures. Yes, there is a retaining wall that goes in there and that will be tile driving. So, uh, retaining wall 230, uh, there will be that, but there will be pile driving happening at that location, but this won't happen until uh, 2023. Uh, but retaining wall E218, this is almost the longest in this uh, segment here, and uh, it's already built maybe just right to about this location here. And it is, it is getting uh, extended all the way. Uh, this is Cambridge. We have, this is, these are the townhomes that I mentioned earlier, and it is going to be right in, the, in their ear. So we're, uh, we've worked with the owners and we're working, we're coordinating with the uh, tenants so that they know what to expect. You know, we have been in the building, we've taken some photographs of existing conditions so that, you know, we're uh, ensuring that, you know, if anything would happen, that, you know, we have at least some form of documentation of um, what the conditions were before, you know, we got ready next to them and started, uh, started driving tons of uh, uh, sheeting next to their, their property. So St. Louis Park 2022, again, some station work. So Louisiana station that will get advanced. We'll start seeing uh, some guideway and track work. Uh, Wooddale Avenue station get, getting advanced. Uh, we'll, we'll be building the guideway and, and track work across, across Wooddale. Uh, Beltline, uh, same, you know, we advance, we'll advance the station work, we'll build a guideway and then build the track across the intersection. Uh, for bridges, the Minnehaha Creek work will be advanced. Uh, Louisiana Avenue bridge that, you know, will set beams and then advance for long work and the southerly connector uh, pile driving to advance the retaining wall work. So for traffic impacts, Louisiana will have some periodic uh, short-term closures for the, you know, of the road, Road, for the roadway reconstruction and the LRT bridge. Uh, Wooddale, when we start crossing Wooddale with the LRT work, that will impact the, you know, the roadway. So we'll, we'll have uh, some short-term closures at that location. Uh, Beltline Boulevard, same, uh, short-term uh, closures as we advance uh, track work across the intersection. And, and again, uh, systems um, work, you know, that has minimal impacts, uh, but, you know, they'll begin some TPSS work in the, uh, in, you know, in, in the city. So we'll, uh, we'll be coordinating that work as well. So very briefly about the systems contract. So, uh, so the systems contract was awarded uh, in uh, September of 2019, uh, Aldridge Pars Parsons Joint Venture, APJV. They have a team of about um, 25, um, you know, for their management team, uh, 40 to 50 craft workers and 25 subcontractors. Really, these are some of the equipment that we'll be using, you know, essentially, you know, on the on the rail, you know, minimal impacts as they string the wires that will power the trains, uh, that will pull those wires across the intersections, but, you know, those will be like really short-term, short-term impacts, We, you know, would, um, would even uh, not mention those because they'll be almost seamless. So uh, this is uh, some of the activities that you know the systems work will be uh, doing, uh, you know, throughout uh, the, the the alignment here. So we, you know, we uh, this is the foundation work for uh, traction power substation, the TPSS, uh, and then uh, we'll see how that will, you know, looks like. Uh, the finish, finished product of that. So this is a finished TPSS station, um, and this is in uh, this is in by the by the U of M's by the stadium, the TCF Bank Stadium, uh, for the uh, Green Line that runs between downtown Minneapolis and St. Paul. So this is just a uh, an example. And then in the inside, this is how it looks like: all the uh, devices and uh, 
and you know that will be powering our trains so that's how it looks like inside so for communications and outreach, uh, you know, we continue to be available. Uh, in 2021, we published construction updates. We, we have over 16,000 subscribers. Our open rate is, you know, nearing 50% or 46%, about 46% right now. We received 17 hotline calls from St. Louis Park residents. Uh, again, we do have a 24 hour hotline. If you've not never utilized that, please, you know, uh, write down that number. Um, you know, it's manned 24 hours. You know, you call if you have an urgent uh, concern, you know, they will start a call tree, they'll call people if it's urgent. And then if it's not urgent, then, you know, they'll take a summary of, uh, you know, what you're calling about. And then that will be sent to several people at the same time. That way we're ensuring that someone gets to you. Uh, I, I wanted to mention, and then we also received hundreds of non-hotline calls and emails from community members to our, our outreach staff. You know, we're uh, three of us uh, covering the entire alignment. My email is listed there. If you don't have it, please feel free to reach out. Um, We've also set up a construction information work group. Uh, this is essentially members of the community who are uh, nominated by the city, representing various areas. And we meet and talk about construction and they've been very tremendous in helping with uh, sharing information and uh, providing you know, construction criticism and uh, feedback to the project. So we really appreciate that. Uh, we started public tours uh, last year. We had two tours, but you know, with COVID, uh, we um, we were running a little low on tours just to make sure that uh, ensuring the safety of, of people and we're respecting uh, what our public uh, health officials are uh, uh, telling us to do. Uh, so. That's for 2021. Uh, up, upcoming community uh, uh, community outreach uh, activities. So public tours will be a big item uh, this year. Um, so we're, you know, we'll we'll have those public tours throughout, throughout you know the construction season, and we'll start connecting up with schools and youth groups so that you know we're connecting with the with the young folks. Uh, for the people who cannot come to the site, we'll also host uh, virtual, uh, virtual tours so that we can uh, show them what's happening, you know, um, and, and without uh, having to move and go to a, uh, to a, to a site. Uh, <clears throat> Pop-up events, so these are um, essentially events that we hold along the trail and what we've held along the trail in the past. Uh, so we will be doing this again uh, this season. Uh, basically, we just uh, you know have a canopy, set it up uh, along the trail, and then we'll start interacting with the folks who who are walking by, riding by, and 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 folks stop by. Tons of people stop by. Tons of people are interested in you know in this project, and they have uh, very good questions. Um, and so we'll be doing that. We'll continue to publish weekly construction updates. If you are not signed up to receive our construction updates, please do so. You know, go to our website, um, greenlinext.org. We have uh, changed. You know, we've switched to the Green Line extension now. You know, Southwest LRT. We're uh, we're moving away from that and we'll you know talk about that a little, a little bit here so the weekly construction updates will continue to be published during the busy times and during the slow times we'll do the bi-weekly construction updates kind of what we're doing right now all right as i mentioned you know we are uh, we're moving away now from uh, swlrt southwest light Rail transit you know we're we're getting to a state where um this alignment will, you know, will open, will open up, and uh, you know, folks, you know, you need to get used to the, you know, to the new, uh, the new uh, name here, the Green Line Extension. That's uh, that's what we're that's what we're preferring to be called. So if you call it call us on the Southwest LRT, 
will still respond to you, but we are not going to be very pleased. Um, so that's uh, yeah, unfortunately we still have SWRT on, on on the email, but uh, if you'd like to email the general uh, mailbox, that's the SWRT at Metro Transit or on Twitter or Instagram, and we continue to do our postings on those uh, social media platforms. So a uh, great way to get connected. You go to our website, greenlineext.org, and then you sign up to receive our construction updates. Uh, those are published weekly during the busy times, bi-weekly and busy times. So that uh, concludes concludes what I had today. I, and it looks like, uh, you know, we ran a little bit uh, the presentation took almost the entire hour here, but um, we'll open it up. I, I see that we are having some questions uh, already. So, uh, Chicago, um, yes. this is Lisa Nelson. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, yes. great. Um, first of all, thank you for doing these. It is very, very appreciated. I did some of the um, open houses last summer, and I also serve on the Minnetonka Opus work group. Oh, with oh yes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I'm just, <laughs> our last work group meeting actually was literally the day before the news broke publicly about the further delays due to the Minneapolis stuff that you overviewed. So I haven't had a chance to connect with them yet. But a question I do have, and maybe you could help me with this because it is in St. Louis Park that I'm asking specifically about, yes. is the, um, you know, you, you know the bike community in Minneapolis is near and dear to many of our hearts, um, yes. thousands of people for joy of biking, for transportation, for commuting, um, exercise, you name it. What What is the outlook on being able to reopen the trail, particularly over the span of the creek, the Louisiana area, uh, maybe even getting into Beltway, that might be, um, that might be the Minneapolis area, but um, what, do you have thoughts on that? Do you think we'll see something in 2022, or is it going to be longer? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, one thing I just want to mention is that you know the trail. A participant uh, has left the meeting. The trail reopening does not have to wait until you know the end of uh, civil construction. Mm -hmm. um, so we we have been working with our project partners uh, and especially um, you know Three Rivers Park District you know for the mm -hmm. portion that immediately affected uh, in St Louis Park and Hopkins mm -hmm. and also with our city our city partners uh, so you know we've uh, been working with the uh, city of St Louis Park and Jack is here on the line as well uh, we have we have been working with him and his team um, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, with the you know the the, the the comments we've heard and 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 we know that this trail trails have been impacted for a long period our project director himself is an avid project avid uh, uh bike rider so you know it, it, it's very important for us to to get the trail reopened so what we resorted to is to start reopening these trails in segments Mm -hmm. uh, so you will see a segment being reopened in Hopkins. So that's one of the first segments to reopen between the Hopkins Depot and 11th Avenue. Mm -hmm. yep. We understand it's a it's a short segment, but then you know at least it's a gain. You know it's a gain for folks who are using that. You know instead of you know the the detour in that stretch is not the greatest. We understand that. So folks would be able to be on the Minnesota River Bluffs Trail for that segment, for that portion, and then mm -hmm. it could connect up with you know the Nine Mile Creek at 11th and proceed. So mm -hmm. that's 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 the first segment. Okay. And this will be the spring. Uh, in fact, we're just waiting for some agreements to be finalized. Uh, Three Rivers are taking that you know to their uh, board this week. Uh, so once that gets finalized, we will be uh, doing a final walkthrough so that we, we make sure that, you know, the trail is ready to receive traffic. Uh, if there are any adjustments that need to be made, we will make those adjustments uh, very quickly and get that portion opened up. Mm -hmm. So that's one. The second uh, uh, segment that we anticipate to reopen, uh, you know, soon would be 
uh, the portion between uh, Beltline and Woodale. Now, mm -hmm. we understand that, you know, it, it almost leads to nowhere, but, you know, it, it, you know we see that as a, a, a local connection, you know, for folks who live in the area and, and you know, want to travel in that area. It mm -hmm. also connects to the, you know, St. Louis Park local trails. Uh, so we we'll still have just a few things to tidy up and, uh, uh, you know, some uh, crossings to uh, improve and finish a portion of a sidewalk. Uh, and then we'll reassess the uh, safety in that area. Then we can open that up. So that okay. would be the second uh, uh, segment to reopen. Now, for the remaining segments, you know, the other segments that we see that could potentially reopen soon would be the segment between Excelsior Boulevard and Wooddale. There is still work to be done, uh, however. We, okay. you know, the portion between, between Excelsior Boulevard and Blake, you know, we have a freight shift that is yet to occur. Uh, so we need to switch, you know, you know, uh, freight in that location with the staging and and and, and space needs, it yeah. would be uh, it would be difficult to do that and continue to ensure um, you know the use of safety. So mm -hmm. that you know that that's one item that is uh, uh, impeding that from happening. And then the the Blake the Blake uh, underpass trail underpass would also need to be uh, completed. Uh, so that you know, folks could have a smooth transition. They could continue on without having to be at grade. This is what we're trying to avoid, right? You know, when we build mm -hmm. these improvements, in you know, we wanted folks, you know, to be able to go underneath the roadway because that's a busy, that's a busy roadway. Yeah. You know? So that, so that, so those are the two uh, main elements that would. Uh, you know, uh, impede us from opening that that segment. So, uh, as you know, scheduling is getting refined, and um, you know, when we when we get to the details of that, you know, hopefully we'd we'll be able to announce good news very soon that you know we're looking at opening uh, that segment soon. Okay. Uh, as we continue to the east, uh, between between. Um, Louisiana, the Louisiana and uh, sorry, between uh, Blake and Louisiana, you know yep. that's an, that would just be another smooth, you know, uh, uh, transition there. We're having the LRT bridge completed there. Um, most of uh, most of the work there is uh, getting buttoned up, so we can see that as another, uh, you know, alignment or segment that would reopen uh, to. To Louisiana and to Louisiana and 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 going um, now as we start getting into the into the area that is east of Beltline, we still have tons of work there, uh, yeah. and, and uh, you know so that will continue to to be uh, shut down uh, at mm -hmm. least you know in the in the you know in the immediate time here as details of the schedule get finalized and hopefully we'll get that opened up now. As we go beyond and start getting into the Kenilworth, that will take a little bit of time because that tunnel would have to be completed. A participant has left the meeting. That okay, that's really helpful. I, one just left, quick question. I'll, I see um, David Davies' son, maybe I'll join on Wednesday night. I think the Minneapolis open house is happening or call, but uh, do you have any update on what's happening between the um, Dunwoody and the twin stadium there was some bridging taking place back there will that continue to be closed this summer or should i stay tuned and join on wednesday um above that will uh, re that will remain closed i think we're, you're talking about the glenwood bridge yeah yeah that, that yeah that work has not concluded yet and we anticipate that the that segment will continue to be to be closed okay all yes. right well, appreciate your help very much all right, thank you. Thank you so much. I see we have some questions in the chat here. Um, so there are no questions. Uh, we'll, we'll take questions in the chat, or if anybody has any questions, please uh, feel free to you know unmute yourself and speak, and, and then we'll address the questions in the chat. All right, go ahead, Chris. Hi, thank you so much for all the information that you brought over. Thank you. Um, the only part that I, I know you mentioned that 
regarding the financing of the increase of the cost of this project, um, there is still a way to figure out that. Do you know if there is a plan regarding like how much the residents of Hennepin County are going to be paying or like how is that going to be divided? Is there any information regarding how are we going to pay this project, the, the excess or the yeah. extra? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Crystal, for asking uh, this question. So, as uh, as you know, uh, or we may know, the you know transit is uh, funded you know differently um, you know in through through the county. So, Hennepin County, Hennepin County is the only county right that um, uh, is is. On hook here, you know, we had the uh, you know CTIP that got uh, disbanded, uh, but then also there are other alternatives. There are other sources that you know um, uh, could be tapped into. So we're continuing to have those discussions, you know, you know, with our management team and uh, uh, a participant has left the meeting to identify the sources. Uh, to identify the sources at this moment to say that uh, Hennepin County is solely going to be uh, paying for this is uh, is premature. Uh, you know, if I, if I would say that will be premature, you know, from my end to say that as uh, as we're still looking at other, um, you know, alternatives and. You know, when, you know, as far as. Residents being 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 taxed, you know, I, I heard a comment on one of the other uh, calls. Uh, someone was asking how much property tax is going to be to be paid so that it could cover, you know, for the construction of the uh, or for the additional cost. And 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 these are these are these are covered by sales tax. So the sales tax revenue that goes into a fund, you know, for transportation. So that's uh, that's one, you know, that's that's one way. If anything would have to to be paid out for transportation, it would be coming from that from those funds. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's a fair question, I guess, because we nobody really knows so far. Right. And it's, inter it's important for the residents, you know, in order to be able to make take decisions regarding our future. Because, for example, my property already went up like about 50 grand. I don't really know how much <laughs> did it change in one year to go up that much. Um, so, you know, it's just a, it's just a concern. And the other thing is, I saw that you did, well, in the presentation, there is a comparison between the price of this project versus other metropolitan cities. Yes. And I understand that part too, but I wonder like why, if you have any idea, why wasn't this you know, taking consideration before bidding for bidding for this project or for the price of this project. I know there are things that are out of control for, you know, inflation and stuff like that, but um, it looks like the price is like quite a difference from the initial bid. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, um, with, you know, with those projects and, you know, kind of with every every other construction project, you know, so, there are things that you would not know until you start, until you start getting into it, until you start, you know, uh, digging out the dirt, and then you realize, oh my gosh, this is this needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And in our case here, you know, when we when we got into uh, into the tunnel work, you know, we in fact, you know, we we brought in a special piece of equipment, you know, to minimize the impacts of the vibration of the yeah. vibration and this is a you know if you and i know crystal you've probably heard you know the you know pile driving it goes bam 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 the sheets are put in oh yeah uh, you have been in my house and everything <laughs> yes <laughs> so <laughs> so uh you know it, it, in that segment there was a, a piece of equipment it's called the, the pressing piler so this this piece of equipment just it pushes pushes the sheets in instead of you know the impact you know of the hammer of the hammer to to 
you know, push the shit in. So even with that, that's very conservative. You know, that was a very conservative method, you know, to avoid the vibration. Even with that, you know, you know, we, we noticed settlements, you know, so we couldn't, we couldn't have best, you know, uh, better plan for it. So as soon as we noticed that, you know, we halted everything and we said, hey, you know, this is the time really for the safety of the adjacent uh, communities. We need to look into this closely. And so we started looking at alternatives and, and then we came up with a technique. Now the technique is not cheap. So, you know, um, you know, there you go, some of the cost. And then, you know, we've got additional, additional costs that need to be added. You have the, the protection barrier wall that needs to be, you know, to be added. That's another another piece. And, and it came out of negotiations with the freight. You know, nice. North, the, the Burlington Northern Santa Fe said, hey guys, we're not sharing a corridor unless you build this long protection area wall. So that so, wasn't anticipated it had to be done. Well, we had in the in the design we had uh, we had a we had a smaller wall. <laughs> it's uh -huh. nothing compared to what you know what you know they came up with. I mean, this massive wall they came up with, and this is this was the condition. If you have negotiated with the freight, you will understand exactly yeah. where we're standing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely get their point of view on that. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, so quickly run through the chats here and see what we got. Um, hello, I missed it, but when do you anticipate bike trails to be fully open? I think we covered that. Um, what is the southerly connector? Sorry if I missed it. So the southerly connector is uh, basically the, it's a new freight connection that will connect up to freight rail corridors. So it's added, it, it's added to the, it has been added to this project so that the trains going east-west on the Bass Lake Spur would connect with trains going northwest, north-south, sorry, on the MNNS, the MNNS Spur. So that connection in the band-shaped form will go all the way, you know, from about Louisiana there uh, to all the way towards the townhomes that I showed on the uh, on the sheets there, and, and and connect up to the MNNS towards that location there. Uh, so that's that's what the southerly connector is, and this was put in again, you know, to continue to serve the businesses along uh, the Oxford stretch. You know, there's a salt company over there; they receive their products via freight. And the Y that used to be uh, connected to the to to the uh, the the line that goes to them, you know, has been removed as a result of this project. So the other uh, question is: Does the southerly connector connect to the Dan Patch line? Uh, no, the southerly connector just between the uh, MNNS spur and the Bass Lake spur. When when are the when are the creek and Louisiana bridges expected to be finished? Uh, Louisiana bridge will continue that work uh, this season, so the the trusses will be set this construction season, and then follow-on work will continue. And uh, the creek, uh, the creek, the trusses have already been set up. Uh, so this will be minimal impact to the recreational use of the creek uh, as folks continue to uh, to build, you know, to build, build the full-on work on that uh, LRT bridge over the creek. When will Cedar Lake Trail reopen? I think we have covered that. Yes, thanks for keeping us to date. To, to, to date. Okay, thanks for updates. Can't wait to arrive. Thank you. Any expansion of the bus service in St. Louis Park while LRT is under construction as more people return to in-person work and school? Um, at the moment, not that we know of, but uh, one item we know is that uh, you know, as we start to get towards uh, revenue service, we will 
we will do a bus sector study. Um, so we'll do a bus sector study and that will um, will identify additional connections to the LRT and then from LRT to uh, to, ra to rail. Uh, I'm sorry, from LRT to buses and then from buses to LRT. Now um, I know that Metro Transit had had to uh, scale back on the you know the frequency because of COVID. You know, and this is something that uh, we anticipate that as things start to reopen, we'll start seeing uh, additional uh, uh, frequency added to the, the bus routes. Yes. And uh, um, you know, if you'd like to get additional information on on this, you know, you know, we can connect you up with uh, with our Metro Transit uh, uh, folks there, uh, or you could also contact um, the uh, customer service line, uh, and uh, that number uh, we, we we could provide that uh, for you here. Uh, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the chat. As I look that up, uh, I will continue to see if there's any other, right, there's no additional questions um, in the chat. Any, anyone else, any other questions? Right, so I'll enter a number here. A participant has left the meeting. All right, so that's the number to uh, Metro Transit Customer Relations. It's uh, oh, oh. Relations, I misspelled it, but sorry about that. So it's 612-373-3333. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any any additional questions? Right. Hey, I have one question. When's the bike lane going to be open, the Cedar tra Trail bike lane, bike trail? Bike trail, uh, so the Cedar Lake bike trails will, will start to reopen in segments. Uh, we're not... You know, because of the of the additional work that will be occurring um, on the alignment, um, you know, we're not we're we're not going to fully open the 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 bike trail, um, and we're not waiting either until twenty uh, twenty five to to start reopening the alignments, uh, the trail, uh, the trails either. So, um, you know, we're. We're anticipating that maybe towards the end of uh, of this season would would be able to get the uh, portion between Beltline and Woodell reopened, uh, but you know there's a segment that will open sooner than that. But that's not on the Cedar Lake Trail. That's on the Minnesota River Bluffs Trail, the portion between the Hopkins Depot and 11th Avenue. So that is getting reopened. Uh, you know, uh, very soon here this spring. We just uh, doing the final finishing to get the agreements in place and then uh, uh, final walkthrough, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, we could get the riders now put on uh, the trail system to use it. So then that will reopen. Uh, and then additional segments will continue to reopen as, you know, uh, safety and construction constraints will allow for it. Right. Any additional questions? Sounds good. Well, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, participating to this meeting. Um, and again, we'll see you next time. Um, A participant has left the meeting. So at this moment, if there are no questions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out the meeting here.